In the last video, I talked about uh, tire pressure monitoring systems and uh, TPMS uh, and uh, reset tools, learning tools, and what they're for and how you use them and demonstrated it, uh, or at least how you use it on my vehicle. Um, and uh, the purpose of that was just to, to set up some background for this video where I want to take this apart because uh, a lot of people may not be familiar with these and what they do. And uh, even if you have a vehicle with, with TPMS, which I would guess most people do now, um, you may not be familiar with this at all that these exist. Um, so the short version, if you don't want to watch that video, is that this is basically sort of like a, uh, a remote control, except it's, it's a radio based rather than infrared. And uh, it just tries, it has a whole bunch of uh, different sequences of signals it can try to send. And uh, hopefully one of them matches the particular sensors you have in your vehicle. Uh, this is the ATEC VT15. And one of the features of this particular model is it has a USB connector uh, so you can hook it up to a computer and with the software you can download new sequences to it. So, you know, even if uh, if you buy a new vehicle next year and it has some kind of sensors that this doesn't rec uh, recognize or work with, um, or, um, you know, like you have an existing vehicle but you put new, t new wheels on it for some reason that have new sensors and they're not ones that, uh, um, <coughs> that this works with, then uh, um, you may be able to get an update that, that addresses that. Um, so besides the USB header, we have this, uh, or USB connector, we have these five holes here. That looks suspiciously to me like it might be an in-series, uh, or ICSP, in-circuit serial programming header for programming the microcontroller in this. Uh, more for like, I guess, factory use, because, you know, for consumer use, you just use the, uh, uh the USB. Um, so we can see if that's, that's an accurate guess. I'm also going to guess that this has, well, we know, we can sort of guess what's in here. It has some sort of USB, it has a microcontroller, and it has some sort of, you know, RF uh, circuitry in there to transmit. Um, and a couple of buttons and LEDs. I'm going to guess that this is a, uh, a PIC microcontroller. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. One, the five pin, um, I want to say that the Atmels use a different number of pins, four or six or something. I'm not really as familiar with those. Um, also, I know PIC has a series of RF sort of RF ready uh, microcontrollers and have RF functionality built into them. I don't know that the, that the competitors necessarily do. Um, and um, although I don't know that uh, PIC, I mean last, this, this has been a long time since I looked at those, but at the time I looked they didn't have ones that had both USB and uh, RF functionality, but they may now. So I'm kind of curious to see if this is like, is this a PIC, like an RF PIC with a separate USB serial uh, chip in it, like a um, uh, FTDI, for example, or is this, uh, you know, maybe it's all in one, or maybe it's a USB capable pick with external, or, or USB capable other microcontroller with external RF circuitry. So I'm kind of curious to see. Um, so, one thing I know right away is going to be a problem is uh, my favorite screwdriver won't fit. It's too large, even this, uh, the smaller one. Um, the uh, this style has a, this one has a smaller diameter uh, thing, but it's still uh, too big for that, really. And also, I think too short. One of the things I don't like about this style is that the 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 bits are are, uh, are um, pretty short. I mean, the nice thing about this is you've got a nice long bit, so when you have these recessed screws, you can get in there. But this is just too big, and this is really too big. So I went ahead and, and got this in preparation. Um, so uh, we've got two screws here and two screws here, it looks like. But it also looks like there might be uh, clips here. So well, let's go ahead and see if we can. There's one. See if it actually comes out with just the screw, or comes apart with just the screws out, or does it need uh, more persuasion? Yeah, those clips seem to be. Oh, there's clips on this side too. Actually, it looks like it's easier to get this in it, maybe. Um, let's see. If I can pry these up, get a 
carefully so as not to snap them. Aha, there we go. Okay. And indeed, that is a uh, five pin header, J1. That looks like a. Uh, Oh, and I see them. I think that's the uh, microchip logo there. So I think this is indeed a pick. Um, alrighty, where did my magnifying glass go? There it is. Let's see what this uh, what this chip here is. All right, so this is a pick 18F 20, 24.55. So that is not a uh, an RF pick, I don't think. I think that's just a, a pretty standard uh, pick 18 type. Um, so I'm guessing that, and I also don't see any. Uh, well, so I'm guessing that this chip here is the uh, um, drives kind of the RF side of things, and that this has the built-in USB functionality. Uh, they're also using a, a crystal, which makes sense for uh, for timing, um, rather than use, using a uh, internal oscillator or whatever because this is something where the timing is fairly critical so so let's see what this chip is here I think I can probably read this without the uh, IXDD 6091PI well I looked up the uh, the chips here this is I thought is a, a very uh, very general purpose uh, pick um, this 18F2455, uh, it's uh, you know moderately powerful. Uh, it's got a 16 megahertz crystal on it. Um, general purpose pick with USB, so make obvious choice for this. No particular RF functionality. Uh, and this chip I thought might be RF related. That it's actually an ultra high speed uh, MOSFET driver. So it seems like they're completely rolling their own uh, RF section here and just sort of uh, you know bit banging the data with the uh, with the pick or, or possibly using the Synchronous serial port, uh, and this is a capacitor, um, and this sort of RFID style um, coil antenna it makes a lot of sense for this application. Uh, I realize because um, some of the sensors have batteries in them, you know, like uh, lithium long life lithium batteries or whatever. Uh, but some of them are actually are RFID devices. They're um, the, the sort of the battery operated ones kind of decide on their own when to transmit. Um, but the uh, some of them are RFID devices that get uh, power from the vehicle and are sort of told when to transmit and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, so yeah, this for that kind of thing, uh, that kind of sensor, this would be needed to not only uh, to to not only talk to the uh, the sensor, but to power it um, for that short time while it, when it's doing its thing. <clears throat> so that makes a lot of sense. Um, Let's see if we can get the, uh, I don't think this is probably going to be very much on the other side since it's all surface mounted, except for, I'm curious if that's, well, I guess because it's a power device, perhaps, but uh, odd that they just had the one socketed uh, dip there. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, I didn't expect much on the other side, uh, just buttons and LEDs. Um, yep. And these little... Uh, Rather nice sturdy rubber buttons here. So yeah, this is a seems like a pretty nicely designed little thing, little uh, device. Um, I like the uh, well, I like that they're using uh, these spring turtle uh, spring turtles. <laughs> spring <laughs> battery terminals um, for the nine volt, rather than. Uh, uh, you know the, the the wires that come out to the little thing that snap onto the battery. Those are always kind of annoying. Um, these this is really nice. Um, nicely the way they've done the uh, the uh, the whole case is pretty nice. Nice the way they've done the um, uh, this with the holes for the ICSP. So you can have this like manufactured for you. Complete send uh, and send you complete units, and then you just. Uh, uh, can program them yourself or reprogram them if you know by the time they're done manufacturing you've got a new firmware or whatever. Um, that's a nice little touch. Um, one curious thing is I don't quite understand why they've got this uh, 
this cutout here for the uh, where you can get to the side of the USB connector. I'm really not sure what that's all about. Uh, maybe just to, I don't know. Well, I don't really know why that is. I thought that was interesting. If anybody has an idea, let me know in the comments uh, why you would go to the trouble of making a special come out, uh, come out, special cutout to contact the uh, the shield the, the, on that, which would be at ground anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's pretty nicely designed. It's a nice little little case. Uh, seems pretty well engineered. So yeah, neat little thing to take apart. One other nice little touch I thought I'd mention there's uh, even a little lanyard hole in the case here. So, uh, yeah, pretty nice little device. Uh, as always, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.